Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Bulletproof for BJJ podcast. Have you been sick, unwell, off the mats, drugs, antibiotics, gunked up? What, what's happening? Like, how do you come back from being unwell? Now, Joe, you have been a little bit unwell recently. It's true, guys. I've recently been a bit unwell. And uh, copped, a, copped a shit cold last week. My son brought it home from daycare. <sighs> Isn't that the story of, of the, the toddler life? People, your parents tell you about it when you don't have kids. You're like, shut up. No one cares. <laughs> and then you have kids and you're like, this is everything. This is real. This is, <laughs> this is as bad as it gets. This is the incub... Like, childcare is like the Wuhan lab. Yeah, it's just a pe- petri dish. <laughs> of bacteria yeah. and grossness. Kids sneezing on each other. <laughs> yeah. so. It's like that scene in um, Fight Club when, when Brad Pitt makes that guy beat the shit out of him. Oh, right. Yeah. I'm f- little. <laughs> you know that guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. on the front says Lil's Bar. And uh, he beats the shit out of Brad, and Brad Pitt's just like egging him on. Yeah, and then at going. a point, he reverses him and gets on top. Brad Pitt's just it's bleeding. Uh, like, you don't know where I've been. A little bit like that. <laughs> <laughs> Joey has his son in uh, Toddler Fight Club. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's saying. But um, yeah, so whatever. Cops cold. I, you know, whatever. I get them, I don't know, once, maybe twice a year. Yep. This is a bad one, actually. This this kind of hurt. Like, I was proper... I was just really unwell for a, a couple of days. But you get that thing where... Like, I had, you know, a bit of pain in my sinus and throat and shit. Whatever. Not, not much fun. Um, but my... I sound... You guys can probably hear it. I sound kind of congested husky. now. Yeah. And I'm... So, I'm coughing and I'm, like, blowing my nose all the time. The gun's sure. coming out, but I'm, I'm fully recovered. Sure. But the shit's still coming out. So... Naturally, when you're in that, when you actually are sick and you like feel like shit, I, I, you're not going to like, I don't know, maybe if you're in your 20s, you do still go to training because yeah. you're just like, whatever, I, don't, I don't know how I feel. It's kind of poor etiquette though, right? Because you can terrible. You make other people sick, so that's... No, like don't do it, yeah. right? Like absolutely don't do it. And don't be that person that's like, so, oh no, I'm sick, so I'm just here inside the academy, but watching. You're like, mother, it's a closed room. <laughs> you're Most, breathing on everyone. That's right. Like just fuck off. Yeah, don't stay, be here. Until you're better. But I find that it's hard to know when to come back. And say for me this week, I was really excited about getting back into training. So last week I pretty much, I don't know, maybe I did one day of strength, but I just didn't do any of my regular training really or much of it. Mm. So this week I'm like, yeah, pumped. Back into training, back onto eating right, et cetera, et cetera. I was like yesterday, do I go to JITS? Mm. Now here's the thing, I'm not going to make anyone sick, but I'd be coughing. Yep. My, you know, I'd even sound, I sound nasally and shit. Yep. And I'm like, it's not the right place to be, y- you know, like it's if just you're still in that recovery phase. Yeah, don't bring, like, yeah, it's, it's going to slow my recovery down. Mm. But it's also just not right to, to be mixing it up with people when you, because they're going to be like, is this guy sick? Yeah, he's What's got it? snot hanging out like of his nose. just went and coughed up a massive loogie. Jeez, a loogie. A loogie. <laughs> For the American listeners. A booger. A booger, yeah. <laughs> um, what do we call loogie? What do we f- call it? Spit. Oh, yeah, it's just like you, when you're hacking up chunks of mucus. Yeah. They, they say, I think y'all say, hock a loogie. Hock a loogie, pot- potentially. Yeah, hock a loogie. We say, yeah, just f- that on the c- <laughs> <laughs> Tune in more for Australian vernacular yeah, lessons. It is. Um, but yeah, no, you, I think what people don't account for with the illness is you have almost like a, a sickness hangover. Like you've got a, a, a couple of days... It could even be a week. For some people, it could be longer where you're not quite right. Yeah. And you, yeah, you're still coughing up junk and you still don't feel that good, but you feel good enough to get back to it. But what we're going to discuss today, um, friends and fam, is how do, we, how do we get through this? Like, how do we restore ourselves? Because doctors obviously are very quick to prescribe meds, antibiotics, all that stuff. But there's very little, there's, there's no follow-up. Doctors like not calling you a week after, like, how you doing? You you feeling okay? Or, like they don't they don't give a shit. They've done their job. Here's your drugs. Go away. Don't come back to you sick again. But a good friend of mine, Sunny Sunil, um, he got really bad flu, and he tried to train through it, and he went to he sweat it out. Training, yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah, right. That's what people Which say. Which is the most bullshit line ever. Yeah, by the way. I'll just sweating it out. I'll just dehydrate myself further and yep. make it harder for my body to function. The illness is hidden inside of my sweat and, and my it will sweating, just I will emit push it out. From my pores. Yeah. No, like, it's like, oh man, I've been trying these leeches, bro. I heard, I heard they're really <laughs> good. No, that's some 16th century bullshit. Um, 
So I was talking to him and he's like, man, I'm still not good. He's in his kind of second week post. He had a week of illness, yeah. didn't see him. And then he had a week where he's pretty average. and he, Pretty and average means like not very good. Yeah. But we, when we say pretty average, we don't mean like, oh, that's kind of good. We mean like kind yeah. of still f- bad. Yeah. And the worst thing was he has been, because he's a tough guy. He's trying to do stuff around it. He's like, I didn't go to training, but I, I, I did some bag work and skipping. I'm like, why? You, you barely got enough energy to work. You're telling me how f***ed up you are. You've got headaches. Like, why are you doing this? Like, what are you trying to prove to yourself you're tough? And I said to him, how's your digestion? Like, is your appetite back? Because appetite is like a really good indicator of health in any organism. Like, they often say when an animal, any kind of mammal loses its appetite, that's a, a, there's a problem there. Right. And so, um, this is going from my vet. <laughs> my vet, like, I was sitting there and basically they had to put our uh, cat down. Um, the cat hadn't eaten for uh, over a week and had a crazy blood infection. Right. And they're like, yeah, you'll notice straight away and, you know, you might find it yourself when you're unwell. You don't feel like eating. You feel a bit spewy or, you, you know, guts are off. Yeah. And he said, yeah, man, my stomach's been really upset and I don't, I'm not hungry. And I'm like, ah, f- Sonny, we need to put you down, bro. <laughs> Sorry, bro, I've got to take you to the vet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're going in the pet cemetery. <laughs> you might come back demonized, but hey. <laughs> um Shout out to the 80s classic Pet yeah, Cemetery. Yeah, Edward Furlong, I oh, believe. Oh, bro, that, yeah. Wasn't and dude, the scene where the kid has the scalpel and cuts the Achilles, like he's walking, oh, he's looking for I don't remember that. Yeah, anyway, it's brutal. It's at the end. I have it etched into my memory. Yeah, tendon ruptures are no joke. Oh my God, but then dude's on the floor and like the possessed demon baby comes out <laughs> with the <laughs> scalpel. <laughs> Cut your throat, bro. That's you, Sonny. So I said to Sonny, how is your eating? He said, I'm barely, I'm not eating much. And I said, okay, this is an issue. And he said, also my stomach's off. And I said, what was the deal? He said, oh, I had some antibiotics. And I said, you had the antibiotics for the flu? Did you have an infection? He's like, nah, but the doctor just said, like, take these, take these. He didn't question it. Mm. And I said, what you need to know, at least with antibiotics, is that it just nukes your gut. Like it just nukes everything, right? Kills bacteria. Just kill everything. The problem is... It's hard to come back from that. And he said, I'm not hungry. What do I do? Because you killed the good stuff and the bad stuff. And the bad stuff. And I said to him, dude, are you, do you fuck with like bone broths or anything like, like soups? And he was like, oh, yeah, I don't mind soups. Like I can, I could, I could do, I can do soups. And I was like, because there's I'm actually. a ramen cup kind of guy. <laughs> no, <laughs> not that at all. Um, I was actually just talking about straight bones in the, um, bones with a little bit of oil in the hot water and stew that up, take the bones out, just drink that bad boy. Yep. Fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, bone broths have become way more trendy, way more popular. People are drinking them. You can actually get like concentrates in jars mm. where you just take out a teaspoon, put it in your cup, hot water like a cup of tea yep. and pump that. And when I was incredibly unwell, when I was 20 years old, I crashed my immune system. Um, I was only allowed to have veggies and chicken broth right to try to restore my digestive system yeah and then shortly after that i was allowed to have like omega-3 fats like some a little bit of fish and uh buddy cod liver oil that's old school yep. but yeah to basically if you want to basically start getting some nutrients back in your body this is an easy way to go and so what i always try and encourage people to do is you know it's that classic old school remedy like oh chicken soup you know i'm not talking ramen i'm not talking maggi noodles Two minute noodles shit. I'm talking like you take some like wholesome whole foods, put them in a pot of water, cook them up, cook that shit up. Yeah, and yeah, then meats, vegetables. Yeah, get it into you. And um, J- just on that, um, the yeah, tell me about this. Go talk more about this antibiotic thing because we do get prescribed antibiotics a lot, right? Yeah, you got a staph infection, antibiotics. Fair enough. You got a throat infection. Like if I had gone to the doctor last week, they would have given me antibiotics for sure. Sure. And if I had been really concerned about it and it had lingered for like longer than, I don't know, four days. A couple of days probably. I might have done that because I'd been like, F- this. But the reality is usually, at least I know for myself, two days, three days, shit passes. And, yeah. it, and if it's changing, I'm okay with it. Yeah. You're like, oh, throat was sore, but now I feel a bit f- headachey, whatever. Like I think we're on the improve. Yeah. So you, like most of you would know this, but you don't, want to just take antibiotics all the time no you want to save them for when you really need them and and the hardest thing is it is the easiest answer 
but it leaves you at a deficit. Yeah. And almost no one does like a restoration phase. And um, yeah, it's kind of the magic thing. You do your course, takes 10 days and then boom, you're back. Hey, I'm back in action. And the doctor's just like, they don't talk about, hey, afterwards you're going to be a bit fatigued mm. and you're going to be at a bit of a deficit, like you said. Yep. So you don't generally know that you're going to go through this. Yeah. And for the best part, like at least for us, like Western diet, there's not a lot of uh, fermented foods. That's not so much a thing. So for example, like sauerkraut is like a big deal in Europe. Like fermented cabbage is a real thing. Yeah. Preserves. Uh, same thing, kimchi in, um, in Korea. Yeah. It's, it's a big deal. Even like pickled ginger, pickled foods, pickles in general, like Poland. My <laughs> Ola can just smash a jar of pickles in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah. Bro, pickles on everything. Or gorky. Uh, the ones, yeah, that? that's, that's Polish, that's Polish cucumbers, isn't it? Yeah, dude, that's yeah, the that's, the, that's the, brand. the best flavor mix right there. They're real good, man. Yeah, and generally it's just salt, water, dill, a few little bits and pieces, and it's just boom, it's really good. Anyway, we, we won't go into that too hard, but this is what I wanted to say. I said to Sonny, "Do you take any kind of probiotic, or do you eat fermented foods?" And he's like, "Nah, nah." And I was like, okay, well, that's something to consider because like... Leave the pickle on the cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> that's your the, first step. The healthiest option. But he has yogurt. And I'm like, all right, so yogurt, yogurt is a step. Um, but essentially, I was, another friend of mine had really bad hemorrhoids. And oh, bro. the advice... Oh, fair, please. No, 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 I'm not. <laughs> but what I was going to say is like, the only advice he'd been given by a doctor was like, just get more fiber. But this actually made it like wor worse. What is actual hemorrhoids? What is it? Basic. Oh my god! Are we gonna get? Are we you gonna know, go? No, I actually don't know. I know it's something. All in right. The ass, yeah, you push. Really you basically, when you don't have enough fiber and you're straining to get it out there, you push your ass inside out. So the inner <laughs> lining of your anus starts to push out and hang out. Good lord! Like, an, like almost like a an ulcer that's been pushed out. Wow! So every time you got to push, it hurts more. Sitting wow. hurts. So my mate had a donut cushion. Oh, yeah, I've heard of these. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So he, so there wasn't contact there, and it wasn't pressing in, and right and he was getting nowhere because doctors like, yeah, just have fiber. But he was like, that's ripping me. It's like he's like, that's like sandpaper going through sensitive area. Uh. Brutal. So I said to him, Got and I'm, I'm no, <laughs> I'm no, I am no nutritionist, but I do understand a little bit about kind of gut health, a little bit, this much, and I'm sharing it with you right now. I just said to him, hey man do you mess with any um, fermented foods? And he's like, oh, I have sauerkraut and my hot dog. And I was like, okay, that, th that's something. I was like, dude, every time you have some meats, have some sauerkraut. Just do that for me. You don't have to start messing with anything crazy. He did that for two weeks. Magic. He called me. He never calls me. He's like, dude, I'm good, man. I'm good. Like hemorrhoids healing up. I'm money now and so now he just pumps sauerkraut with like <laughs> every major meal i think you should actually fix your yeah, so chinese diet. restaurant do you have hot dogs here <laughs> can, I, can i get some sauerkraut with this <laughs> chow mein please but uh, but that's the thing uh if you're living the first world western life we don't often feature these things whereas no. like you get like even like hummus well, traditional even. food cultures like traditional more sort of um well-established cultures food, cuisine cultures should say have these things built Preserves. in, don't they? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, so what were you going to say about fiber? <laughs> no, I, was, I, I had an interesting conversation with a guy I know who's a strong advocate of, uh, like, um, carnivore, okay, carnivore approach. And I asked him, I was like, "Hey, talk to me about the fiber thing because that's one of the, like, if you follow the sort of the, the Western science, it's like you got to have fiber in your diet. Sure, keeps things moving, right? Yeah. You look at the carnivore diet; it's devoid of fiber. Mm. And uh, he was like, oh, hey, man, like you can, you know, check out these resources, et cetera. But he said, I'll, I'll give you like a one good analogy is like if you've got a traffic jam, the solution is to not add more traffic. Right. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And so what he, he, I think he was saying that something actually changes within the lining of the intestine when you're okay. eating, uh, when you're eating the carnival thing, which just allows stuff to pass through. Right. Anyway, I'm a fan of fiber. Sure. Eat your veggies, eat yeah. some fruits, get it in. Sure. But he, he, this is the thing that I, I, I have found incredibly interesting is the link between what we talk about gut health. So we, we were actually talking more around your colon, like your lower intestine more than, you know, the first thing after your stomach. Yeah. Where you actually withdraw a lot of nutrients. They have done 
uh, fecal transplants with people who have depression. Yeah. And if you introduce someone who has healthy fecal matter, shit, into an unhealthy gut, that new gut bacteria will actually help change their gut health and they become less depressed. Yeah. Right? So gut health and depression, all these things go together. I often talk to people who, uh, you know, for various reasons will be like, no, 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 you know, I've, got, I've gotten sick because of I got cold. Well, actually, 80% of your immunity is in your gut. So if you have like really thin gut lining and you, 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 your digestion isn't great, then you are probably susceptible to getting sick, you know, like the layer of mucus that lines your stomach and, and the health of your digestive tract really dictates the health of you. So if you're coming back from a deficit, you're sick, it's like now is definitely the time to go, okay, what are some small changes you can make that could help you be healthy? Yeah. So really easy for me, super easy. Um, a broth or a soup of some sort, that's what I always go to. So I've got a really good chicken, chicken soup recipe, which I, I, I work with. And then um, also just adding a fermented food, whatever you like. Some people like Asian food, so they're like a pickled ginger or they'll like a, a, um, a kimchi or maybe you're more like the sauerkraut pickle euro version of that. Yep. There's so many different ways for you to get it. You can just Google fermented foods, go down the list and be like, oh yeah, I could eat that. Because some of it's kind of weird or funky, you might not be into it. Just be mindful that there is, they're not all created equal. No. As an example, like if you get, um, like say Japanese pickles, like sure. pickled ginger or pickled daikon or something, sure. which are delicious. The, the daikon's like the yellow one you often yeah. get, like with ramen, pickled ginger, you'd know that's the pink stuff, often comes with sushi. Um, but it's basically like a quick pickle made from vinegar and a load of sugar. Right. So it tastes really nice and there's still something going on there that's good. But you compare that to like a, a small batch made, like like a homemade sauerkraut, yeah. which is literally just cabbage and salt. Yeah. And then it's the bacteria that's in the air and it's the time in it's confinement left. that make, you know, like that thing is a superpower. Yes. That thing there just tastes yummy with the... It's <laughs> just, just a condiment. Yeah. Uh, but hey, it's better than nothing. Sorry. And wh- you know, one other thing I believe, um, when you buy sauerkrauts and shit here in Australia that are imported, so, yep. so when you go to the supermarket... The shit that's like on the shelf that's like the more affordable, the European brands, they've all been pasteurized. Mm. So they've been heat treated. And that kills. Kill the bacteria. Yeah. Whereas you buy the Aussie made ones, they're going to cost you four times as much. It's like Byron yeah. Bay, <laughs> sauerkraut or whatever. Yeah. God damn but it has, But it has the good stuff in that's there. That's why I can afford all those mushrooms. That's chill right. out on LSD. Yeah. I'm buying their overpriced sauerkraut. <laughs> yeah. Local, local, getting local is always a good thing. And um, the other thing I wanted to say, because there's been a few arguments against this recently, which is probiotics. So Who's been arguing against probiotics? Oh, some people are saying, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's a Band-Aid. It doesn't fix your gut, blah, blah, blah. It's right. not native to your gut. But I'm like, look, if your gut health is shit and you feel sick and you're no good and you're coming back from antibiotics, putting like high dose probiotics, which are kept in the fridge. Now, there's stuff you can buy off the shelf rip off it doesn't work because it's dead probiotics need to be refrigerated to keep the cultures alive um you go to the health food store or wherever you need to go yeah. it's I think usually like in a health plus is like yeah usually refrigerated and yeah but like even if you're getting like, like bio brand name bioceuticals yeah like that's the gold standard it's super expensive you're like i'm paying a dollar a tablet here but just one of those and you just have one a day for a week or two you you actually will feel better and it will do a lot to help you feel healthier you'll look like michael galvan within a few days basically i mean that's what he's on because he's vegan and natty um no so here's the thing very interesting um element that that people don't really uh talk about is all right what are you eating where are you getting it from because if you buy certain meats or certain vegetables from just a, a regular store they can be more processed and exposed to more chemicals. Now, I'm not going to go off tack here and just go organic everything because that's not always the answer. But if you can buy meat from your local butcher and you know where they got the meat from, that's way better than it being processed in a massive factory where it could be exposed to a lot more bacteria. Like a friend of mine who's a chef refuses to eat chicken like at all because when he was younger, he worked on a chicken farm and then he worked in a processing plant. And he's like, no, right. I will not eat chicken unless someone has killed it in the backyard. And don't, like I've seen it, you know, it's not processed in that kind of big farm way. 
what it might sound like a little bit different, but it could be worthwhile for you to be like, oh, do I have a local butcher? Could I like maybe try and get something a little bit different? And same thing with your vegetables. Could I get it at a farmer's market? Or like just have a look at doing something which means that you're less likely to expose yourself to chemicals, pesticides, and bacteria you just may not be aware of. I actually saw something cool the other day, which was um, in Japan, they have stickers on the meat that if there's a certain, like it reacts to the um, certain amount of whatever chemical it is when meat goes off, mm. the sticker changes color. Oh, wow. So you can't sell meat that's expired. That's cool. Yeah, I was like, oh, that's really clever. Yeah. But um, I have one one more thing in closing. I actually learned this from... Can I uh, just add something to please? that? I think the... Um, like when you're looking at your when you're looking at your diet and you're looking at your gut health and stuff like that, and anyone that's kind of like somewhat across this gut health sort of revolution, sure, understands that like the science is pretty new and there's so much to be uncovered there. So it's kind of tricky, right? And 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 we're not saying like, hey, no. go and buy these expensive supplements and sauerkrauts and stuff and have that shit all the time. If you can, great, but you probably you're not going to, right? But here's <laughs> the way here's the way I look at that's it. That's the spirit. Is that if you have generally a good diet. Mm. So you eat high quality fruits, vegetables, meats on a regular basis. Sure, sometimes you eat low quality stuff. Sometimes I go to McDonald's. Sometimes I go to the local Thai place. I sure. know that it's not free range organic chicken when I pay sure eight dollars fifty bucks. for a yeah. plate of chicken Huge. and vegetables, yeah. right? But that's okay. But the majority of the time, the stuff I buy at home, we spend a little bit more, get high quality. It's more locally produced. It's right, all those things, lesser yeah. chemicals, etc. Um, I think if you can keep that as your base. Yeah, and then when you are coming back from illness or something, you're like, all right, I'm at a deficit, so it's like I'm going to go hard for the next week or two, get some probiotics, get some like you know, buy the expensive sauerkraut, like do that yeah. shit, and like use that to like accelerate you back to your baseline. Yeah, and then ideally, and at least the way I visualize it in my mind is that my healthy diet is taking care of it. Yeah, from then on. Yeah, for sure. And and look, yeah, definitely, life just throws fluctuations at you. That's the nature of the thing. But we want you to come back sooner. So with my example of my friend Sonny, I had said to him, dude, like you're trying to come back to training because you think that's the way you get your body healthy, but your diet is shit, your sleep's not right. Like it would be really important for you to consider that part of what's making you feel so unwell is the fact that your digestion's off and you should think about that and put more time into that. Here's something that I got from Dr. Carl. So, Dr. Carl uh, is a man of... Chris kind of Lenecki, or whatever. The Aussie guy. Yeah. Cr- I love that guy. Yeah, Chris um, Lenecki. He, w- he was our um, physics lecturer at uni, actually. Oh, wow. Back in the day, height of his Triple J fame. Yep. Um, I love listening. He's still on there. He's great yeah, to listen he's, to. Yeah, he's such a smart guy. And a lot of people were not coming to his physics lectures. <laughs> it was winter, you know, in this old hall, and it was kind of cold and wet and... You know, it was the last, it was like a double period thing at the end of the day and people would just not go. And he said, all right, guys, you're getting sick. This is not good. Let me give you the recipe, which is the cold killer. You know, when you start to feel yourself get a cold, and he's like, this is what we're going to do. And I was like, all right. You know, so we all pulled up. He's like, physics, let's be healthy. And he's like, right, you need omega-3 fatty acids, right? You need to get omega-3, omega-6, omega-9. You need to get the, the fish, fish fats. He's like, so some people like salmon, some people like mackerel, like you need a f- uh, sardines, you need a fatty fish. He's like, you're going to fry that bad boy in olive oil. Like, okay, all right, talk to me. And he said, right, you need garlic. Why? And then he broke down, I, I don't know the science and all this, but the antibacterial properties of garlic. And I was right. like, holy shit. Also delicious. Like fried garlic with some fish. Like, oh, that yeah. sounds nice. And then he said, right, vitamin C. You need a power punch of vitamin C. And this is something that's always stuck with me. It's like red capsicum per gram has 17 times the vitamin C of an orange. It's like, holy. So those of you out there, you're like, what's a capsicum? Uh, Bell pepper, red bell pepper. And he's like, so you can have it fresh or you can kind of saute it in there, like get that going. And he talked about ginger. And he broke down ginger's anti-inflammatory effects on the gut. And he's like, basically, if you've got a gut upset, you could make a ginger tea or what you do is you grate the ginger in with the salmon. And he started talking about honey. I was like, God damn, you're putting honey in this? Because I'm like, I'm a very sweet and savory separate. He's like, yeah, trust me. He's like, you want to go and get yourself, he's like, a bit of manuka honey. It doesn't have to be super expensive chemist honey, but like get manuka honey. 
is like what that will do to help your throat. Like if you have a, a local infection in your throat, huge, huge like win. So he's putting all, all together and he's like, fry that up. This is the cold killer. And he's like, you have this meal with these peppers and this salmon and you fry it up. He's like, it's delicious. Eat the garlic, eat the ginger. And the thing is the ginger changes to like a sticky paste, which is quite delicious. If you've grated it. If you grate it. Yeah, and, and it becomes, it's actually like a really good dish. Yeah. Anyway, I did make it a couple of times and it was like delicious. But I did also not go to physics class. Because <laughs> I felt well and healthy. So I went and did some other shit. Got what I needed. But shout out to Dr. Carl. Because he's, he's, he's a smart guy. Uh, yeah, he is. Yeah, but it was just really interesting that he, he just recommended very natural foods and having a good meal. Yeah. And it was funny that, you know, this guy is like a physics genius. And he was like, eat this. And I was like, wow, this was really impressive. I learned that back when I was like 20 years old. That's cool. Yeah, so good. So... I'll with that next time i feel the feel the little sting coming on and actually a little bit of a little bit of soy maybe as well oh mix it up but for those of you out there if you're coming back from illness and you're not sure why it's taking longer to come back than you need to maybe have a look at what you're eating it can make a huge difference there it is nice thanks bro delicious see you guys